Here we are on Thursday afternoon at WFO. Just did a couple uh, finish up things we had left. Replaced the rear link bolts and put nitrogen in the shocks. I'm standing here with Kevin Yoder and he's gonna tell us a few things about the car. First off, tell us about the front axle housing. What front axle are you running? So the front axle housing, we have a sandy cone center section and it holds a Gearworks um, high 10 inch. And then we have Reed, the Super Kingpin knuckles and C's. And we have Rockwell RCVs inside of them going to 40 spline shafts into the 40 spline 10 inch Gearworks. The steering, we have custom WFO steering arms on there. We have a Howl 10 inch ram that we have not taken the spacers out for. It is a 10 inch, but it's limited to eight at the moment. Um, the steering the Howl ram, it has a PSS pump, and then a Howl reservoir, uh, hose shop hydraulic lines, and with a Northern Hydraulics orbital valve. And this front axle housing you built from scratch. You got just the center section Correct. from Sandy so, Cone. So yeah, it's a, it, we have four inch um, 380 wall tubes with uh, WFO mounted the steering and this is all AR plate. So it has a one heck of a skid plate on there. And, uh, but yeah, it's a Sandy Cone center section and we built the rest. And you fixed this all up in, in your barn and- Correct, so built it, it, was, from scratch. it was barn built. 100%. And then all your all your mounts are quarter inch TIG welded and those are chrome ollie, right? Correct, yeah. So the um, all the link bracketry is uh, 3 16 chrome ollie that's been skinned. So you end up with 3 8 thickness. And then uh, what's the motor in this thing? The motor is an LSX block that uses a 4 and an eighth stroked crank. It's a 4080 bore. So it's about 431 cubic inches. And it has L92 heads, bone stock. It's a big torque monster. And when you first built the motor, it was aluminum block, right? And then the aluminum block block didn't hold up. Yeah, that's correct. So I was originally had an LS3 in here, but when the when the, it would get traction, the block would flex and dump the oil. So we went with an LSX block the next time and it runs tight. You put all the same rotating assembly. Yeah, pistons, we just took rods. basically essentially all we did is get new pistons. Um, board an LSX 376 block out and put all the components from the LS3 into it. So it is a dry sump motor. Um, it, uh, it rips. What, what's your rev limiter set at? I think about 6200 RPM. So we have, um, it does 111 at, when it hits the rev limiter, it's right at 111. Wide open, no more to give. Wide 42s. open, no more to give. So we run 42 inch tires, the lowest gears you can get for a four, it has a super 14 in the rear. It's the lowest gear set you can go is 538s. Well, 538s with 42s puts you about 145 miles an hour. So we actually- I'm not riding with you at that speed. <laughs> no, I'm not driving that speed. So what we did is we put a tube works under drive. It's about 31% full time. So it dropped down the top speed, but it gets there a lot quicker. So and that, that under drive just bolts between the back of the transmission, the transfer case, and it's always in 31%. Correct. It's got a Reed Turbo 400 case in it. And so behind the Reed Turbo 400 case is the tube works under drive to an Atlas. Tube works makes that under drive. You can get different gear ratios. Yeah, that, you can right? get one. It's, um, it's about 31% under drive. So it's like 1.31 and then you get it go up to 1.5. And what gear ratio is your Atlas? You have an Atlas race case, right? I have an Atlas race case with 1.5. And most of the race we're running in high range, Correct. only when we get in the real tight stuff. No, the, the underdrive makes it an animal, so. Yeah, we don't have to shift to low nearly as like everybody else. So right. this is actually a working scoop, brings air in and puts air over the transmission cool or the power steering cooler and the oil cooler right here but what about cooling the transmission and the underdrive uh, transmission and underdrive we have a liquid to liquid it's a ron davis um, heat transfer um, cooling system so it takes the water coming it's a rear mounted radiator as the cool water comes forward it goes through a heat ex ron davis heat exchanger pushes the transmission fluid through it and then the transmission fluid leaving the cooler splits between spraying the planetaries on the underdrive, and then it goes back into the tranny pan and then the rest of it goes into the transmission. So the, yeah, the underdrive has automatic transmission fluid and we don't seem to ever overheat the transmission or the underdrive. No, it works great. And the engine never overheats either. No. And uh, the Ron Davis radiator, 
stuff right back there on electric fans. Um, anything else? We'll go to the, the rear end and show you the rear end. So you built this rear end completely from scratch, right, yes, Kevin? Yes, this, this, this rear end was built 100% scratch. Uh, all the plates, it's no bending. It's all individual plates welded together. And um, all TIG welded. All TIG welded. It has four inch chromoly tubes and then um, three sixteenths chromoly plating. The backbone is um, plated with three sixteenths and then a skin on top of it. And then all the bracketry is uh, three inch or three sixteenths chromoly. The bearing cups um, are a high grade steel. There's probably a hundred hours of welding and machining into this. And then this is running uh, Ford unit bearings, correct? This is running the late model o, uh, 05 and later Ford unit bearings. We re-drilled them to eight on eight, six, eight on six and a half. Um, so it runs a 40 spline axle and then it has a 40 spline um, puck that goes to the, the stock spline of the unit bearing. For the drive flange. But, on the, drive flange. but on the front, the uh, outer axle shaft just slides right into the splines. Correct. So it's got a Rockwell size RCV and it plugs right into the hub. So there's no there, there's no spline. There's nothing. Just all one piece. And then you can grease the R, the RCV right through that. Yeah. Grease, the or... great thing about these RCVs is you can you can charge them with grease right from the outside. No taking it apart. No, no taking it apart. No so long term race prep. Nope. Um, the fuel cell, let's talk about the fuel cell. You built this from scratch, right? So yeah, this is a scratch made fuel cell. Let's see has, how it shapes down with the chassis correct. there. Correct, there's 44 usable gallons in it. Um, it has a big Holly hydromat in it and we've moved the pumps, fuel pumps internal with all um, aluminum lines so there's no rubber in the tank at all anymore. So we built the fuel cell and then had Aerotech, they build a aviation bladders. We had them build the bladder. Yeah, so th this, uh, aluminum can has a rubber bladder the same shape inside there uh, that's custom built for it and then it has uh, what foam and a holly fuel mat in there with the pumps right correct yeah uh, I'm trying to think some of the other cool things about this car I mean it's not the newest chassis when did you build this chassis I believe in 2011 2011 and uh, these tires the 42 inch pit bulls these are actually the four tires we raced two out of three laps in King of the Hammers last year before we uh, had to stop with fuel issues. And what'd you say? They uh... I haven't. I have not checked the air pressure and since we the, we started the race last year. So they're almost a year to the date, untouched and, uh, and holding air just fine. They obviously we didn't get any flats. We didn't have to change the tire. No. Um, or any of that. No, we had the same the same spares on there, brand new. It's never been on the ground. Yeah. Um, any other stuff that's kind of different than other race cars in here that you know of? Um, as far as inside, these seats, I ride in this and I know I love these seats. Those are OMP seats. Um, what, what's the special deal about these? Why do you like these seats? Um, I'm a fan of a, um, a tub seat, a fiberglass tub seat, not just aluminum Kirkley, but something that's made to race. Suspension seats are okay for their purpose, but uh, I don't believe in them to be in a hardcore race car. Yeah, we could sit in this thing all day and get beat around and I feel great getting out of this car. I feel safe in it too. With a tub seat and good seat belts, um, you're plugged into the car. So. I'm trying to think if there's anything else kind of cool about hey, this. Also new for this year is we actually have an actual working fuel gauge. Oh yeah, that's cool. Where's that gonna be? Right in the middle of the Oh, right there, boom. Fuel gauge in the race car. Another thing too that a lot of people don't have is this air cleaner that's right underneath the dash on the passenger side and it's a huge air cleaner. What's the benefit of that? Um, the bigger the air cleaner, the longer you go between services and you don't have to worry about it plugging during the race. <laughs> and uh, have you checked the air cleaner since last year? We checked it, it looked pretty good. All right, good. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. There's always a lot of cool stuff. So it's got spools front and rear, 40 spline. 40 spline spools front and rear. Um, as you mentioned before, it has the Super 14, which is the 14 bolt dropout. And we've taken that apart and done gears in that a ton of times. It does go through them every once in a while. And then the front is the high 10 from Gearworks. Another thing we forgot to talk about, Kevin, is the brakes. Tell me about the brakes. So this car has more brakes than any other Ultra 4 car out there. 
basically these are Jamar's, Jamar's um, trophy truck brakes. So these are 14 inch by inch and a quarter vented rotors and these calipers are huge as you can see. So this car has incredibly stopping power. So it, um, <laughs> this thing has awesome brakes, the best I can say. And when you put these brakes on, it wasn't just bolt the rotors and calipers on and make it work. There was a lot of work that went in up there, in the car, right? Yeah, there was a lot of work. It actually has a, um, a very big uh, leverage pedal, to, uh, pedal ratio in there. So it's a big, long pedal that took a lot of retrofitting. You can see that we actually have a bump on the hood that holds the uh, billet reservoirs or the billet master cylinders. Well the, well, the master cylinders had to be up in the center so they're high enough up to feed the brakes. Right. But then right here is actually the pedal pivot, right? Yeah, so the master cylinders are under there. That's the brake reservoir. Oh, the reservoir, the yeah. reservoir is up there. So uh -huh. JMR makes the best stuff on the planet. So they're everything's billet it's awesome and there there's no option of changing the length of the pedal or the throw so you had to build, rebuild the car correct. to get the pedal to fit at the right throw he wanted correct to plunge the correct amount to make the brakes work correct yeah correct i was fortunate enough to be a partner up with jmar on this stuff and it's awesome move so no complaints i've dealt with brake problems my entire racing career except for the last five years since I've had these brakes and I have the same original pad set on them. Yeah and how many wheels have you broke with these calipers? Uh, the, I have broken a number of wheels and the calipers are still hanging tight. If so. you look at every one of these calipers there's aluminum and scratches and gouges and it kind of just lets the wheel roll around on it for a while until the wheel comes apart and the brakes are fine, right? Yeah, the calipers are made of a high grade, either a 2024 or 7075, and they can machine the wheel. When the wheels bend, the calipers machine them straight. Yeah, perfect. Well, that's another thing on this car. Not everybody has good brakes. I've been in so many race cars that the brakes suck, and this thing is, you know, like a sports car.